share on the dice and expected copper sundays and my dear friends actually it's an adventurous thing to present a content which is uh, rotating 10 or more pages in the time limit of 15 minutes anyway i'll try my best and my title is anti colonial movements in kerala role of muslim scholars their motives and influences and anti colonial struggles these struggles form an important chapter in the history of kerala and here i am selecting three prominent scholars who were in kerala in different phases of these struggles and this study focus on three relevant areas first of all study of biographies of selected muslim scholars who were in the leadership of these struggles and secondly study of their works their academic works which is written for making uh, ideological basis for these struggles like uh, saiful batar and tahrir etc and the third one is uh, to mark to point out the to analyze the influences made by this this sort this scholars a aforementioned scholars and their academic works uh, how do these things are influenced the society and the community uh, that is the three important areas of my study and colonialism and muslims and first of all we have to understand that the the racial enmity of europe towards muslims uh, it is started from the uh, age of holy crusade series and the colonialism the crusade series uh, was not only a conflict between two religions or like this but uh, that was the uh, plan pre plan annihilation project of europe uh, against muslims and i'm saying here that the colonialism or the trader uh, journey so the journey started by christopher columbus was a continuation of these colonial wills in the world history and the tra- uh, when the colon- the portugal for the portuguese colonials uh, when they came to india they came to kerala shores the trader dominity was in the hand of muslims and they understood that it is it is important or it is mandatory to demolish or attack these muslims to get the dominance in the in the mars in the trade area and they started to attack muslims uh, targeting muslims and attack these things uh, mentioned these things by zainuddin makdum too in his work uh, tuffatul mujahidin and anti colonial movements in kerala and muslim scholars and the struggles taken by muslim scholars in between 15th century to 20th uh, half of 20th century we can we could it, it it could be classified into three important phases the first phase remarks the portuguese colonialism from uh, ad 1498 onwards that was uh, the era of uh, sayyid mahdum first and the second phase is started from uh, the british british colonial rule and the uh, in this era the british colonial powers uh, used the uh, local feudal system as the uh, tool of their colonial wills and that's the main peculiarity of this second phase and the third phase is during which national movement for independence was beginning to take shape and the khilafat movement was an important a thing which played a crucial role in this phase of anti colonial struggles first of all uh, i would like to say about uh, sheikh saeedin makhdoum he was born on ad 1467 in kochi and uh, went uh, to mecca and egypt for his higher studies and returned to kerala after his higher studies and uh, we can see he started his works or his reformer works and his anti colonial works first of all he is 
start, he is starting with uh, reformal works between in between or internal reformers works the community and he understand uh, he understood that uh, it is necessary to reform the community and strengthen them to fight against uh, colonials and the colonialism it is mandatory to reform the internally the community and that will help the community to fight or struggle against the colonialism and he started uh, reforming the community and he founded a masjid at Punani at Punani and uh, he uh, founded a, a school or a education center followed by this masjid and he started his works by founding this and he strongly condemned the misbeliefs or the such practices uh, which, uh, which was spread in the community and uh, actually he uh, lead, uh, led the reform works in, in the community and secondly he started uh, directly uh, involving in the anti-colonial struggles and he uh, did her, he wrote his famous work at Tahrir for making the ideological base for this anti-colonial struggles and the Tahrir was uh, the first work or the first academic work which is ideologically engaging with the colonialism and which challenges the Muslim community to involve in the struggles, in the ongoing struggles against the colonial rules. And the Tafir is, is an important uh, thing in order to Sheikh Sahadim Makhdum one. And the intervention of Sahadim Makhdum had great influences in the Kerala history. Uh, the Muslim community came forward for jihad by his works and his academic writing, Tafir and the Maraka family who were alive in the anti-colonial struggles for centuries uh, actually they had influenced by the Sayyidin Makhdum first and his work Takiri and they became a part of these struggles after the work Takiri and the, uh, the, the main or important the contributions, uh, the important contribution of Makhdum, Sayyidi Makhdum first is he taught the community, the Muslim community to sacrifice the materialistic wills or the materialistic desires in making or uh, to sacrifice religion, uh, in, uh, to sacrifice materialistic wills for religious objectives. That was the important teaching of Sayyidi Makhdum first and through this teaching or through this view he taught the community to fight against this colonial rule. And his work, the, the Takhrir is one of his important work. And in the, in the book, in the, it's, actually it's written uh, in a form of a poem, uh, which includes 177 lines. And in the first part of this uh, poem, he describing the atrocities or violences which uh, taken by the colonial, the Portuguese colonial against the Muslim community and he mentioning the once the Vasco da Gama set fire the Muslim, a ship which includes Muslim women, Muslim children and Muslims. Like this he describes the uh, atrocities of uh, colonial, Portuguese colonialism against Muslims. And in the second part he challenged the Muslim community to fight against these colonial rules and he Describe that this fighting or these struggles, it's a part of their belief and this, the idea of Islam uh, to not subordinating anyone except Allah. And this, from these doctrines or from motivated by this doctrine, he challenges the community to take part the ongoing struggles or to challenging community to being uh, to be a part of these struggles. And this was the ideological base which he used to uh, challenge the community to take part in these struggles. And secondly, uh, and after Sayyidin Makhdum first, uh, Sayyidin Makhdum second, who is uh, the author of Tukhfat uh, al-Mujahideen and Kali Muhammad, the author of Fatah al they are following the ideas of or they are following the food of the Sayyidi Makhdum first and by Khali, by Khali Muhammad the first phase uh, it will end at 
Kadi Mamura. Second phase starts with the Sayyid Alevi Tangar of Mamura. He born on AD 1753 and he was actually he born at Yemen, born at Yemen and traveled to Kerala his, uh, at, at the 17 of his age and started uh, reformal works and anti-colonial struggles at Kerala. And the second phase, the second phase of anti-colonial struggles uh, under the Muslim scholars, it had some peculiarities. Uh, first of all, the British, uh, in the first phase, the, the, the enemy or the target on, was only the colonialism. And so when we are looking into the second phase, the colonialism used the local feudal system as the tool of their colonial bills. And the struggles under these scholars was two-dimensional which uh, focuses or which faces these two uh, powers and the colonial struggle, the colonial powers, uh, the British colonial power and the local feudals which were the two, which was the tool of these colonial powers and these two dimensional struggles are the important peculiarity of the second phase. And the Sayyid al Tangal, he came to the mainstream of, mainstream of anti colonial movements by questioning the local feudal system and he understand that this, uh, as I mentioned before, this feudal system is used by the colonial, the British or the British colonial as a tool of their colonial wills and they uh, use the, this uh, feudal system as a tool of their colonial wills. And the struggles or the fights uh, under the uh, Sayyid Alevi Tangal that was uh, simultaneously that was facing or that was uh, targeting the the feudalist system and at the same time that was targeting the British colonialism that is the peculiarity of this time and uh, his famous work Sayyid al Batal that means uh, sharpest sword uh, he uh, it is the Sayyid al Batal the work is uh, it contains a detailed fatwas on struggle or the 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 importance of struggle against the British colonial or colonialism. The call in Seyfu Bata to confront the colonial rule by providing financial and military aid. And we can see the lines of this work or this this book. Like uh, he's saying it is compulsory for all, including kids, slaves, doctors and women to take part in the war in the war. It is compulsory for, uh, for all, including kids, slaves, doctors and women to take part in the war. People living in far off places should provide aid to the fighting front. Like this, he uh, forming an ideological base in the light of Quranic verses and the uh, uh, Islamic ideology. To, it is compulsory to all Muslims in ta to take part in these struggles. That is, it, it, it is, it is compulsory to all in the light of Quran and the Islamic ideology. Like this, he developed this, its ide his ideological base for these struggles. We can see like this the book, the work, Sayyid al -Bata. And the third one is Ali Muslia. And his work, the Ali Muslia is actually the representative of the third phase of these struggles. That means the third phase of Muslim anti colonialism uh, which uh, started the national-wide independence movements in India and these struggles were uh, Ali Muslia's role he uh, he, wa he was uh, came to uh, he came he came to these uh, movements after uh, we can, what we call the modernity or the modern phase he was the he came to the these struggles and these uh, these three scholars they have they are practically let the community or the let the society in hold in the colonial struggles and their motive was the religious base the religious ideological base was the their motive in their works and I'm concluding with this and is there anything I'll add in the discussion inshallah